This is a GIS News Hour for Tuesday, May 31st, 2011. I am Abigail McIntyre. Coming up, the St. George's University gets high praise from government for contributions to national development. Grenadians will soon be paying less for funerals, and the 2011 hurricane season promises to be above average. Five major hurricanes are expected. Details to these and other stories after the break. Sometimes, the simplest joys in life can be the most rewarding. For quality sexual and reproductive health care services, make the GPPA your next stop. Visit our offices at St. George's and Grenville. Call 440-3341 or 442-5442 for more information. The Grenada Planned Parenthood Association, promoting healthy living. Do you really want to save on the cost of posting? Grenada Postal Corporation is the answer. We offer convenience, online tracking, reliability, on-time delivery, and of course, unbeatable prices on express parcels and registered mailing. Ask about your online visa application and notification by email service. Grenada Postal Corporation, a member of the UPU, the world's oldest network. Send, receive, delivered. Welcome back. Finance Minister Nazim Burke has described the St. George's University as an institution that has played a significant role in the post-independence development of Grenada. He says government has now seen it fit to move beyond its current agreement with the institution to exploring deeper ways of building and improving the country's gross domestic product. The St. George's University Limited Amendment Bill 2011 was among five bills taken through all the stages during a meeting of the House of Representatives on Tuesday. Opposition leader Dr. Keith Mitchell applauded government's effort in reaching an agreement with the St. George's University, particularly as it relates to the institution seeking government's permission before adding new dormitories. He's, this, he says, will ensure that other room stock providers have a fair share of the market. With respect to the lease is not new, but two new clauses were added to Article 10 uh, let me say that the first one, in the first one, Clause 4, the university agrees not to build any new student housing in Grenada without the prior consent of the government for a period of two years from the date of signing of the agreement. The concern here, Mr. Speaker, was that since a number of Grenadian citizens and landlords uh, themselves have buildings in the south of the island uh, and had built those properties taken mortgages in contemplation of getting students from the university to live uh, in their facilities. We were concerned that uh, with the university simply building out facilities and dorms for its students, it may severely compromise um, uh, the, 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 the landlords and in a very abrupt way. So we agreed that um, before anything is done, nothing will be done for the next two years without the consent of the government itself. So this was a very, I must say, this is a very good insertion. It's, it says here, after two years, within two years of this agreement, no additional buildings will be put, on, put down by the university unless it discusses with the government of the day. I think this is a good insertion because clearly, especially in these times where there are very little construction in the country, and little opportunities in the country. I think having an insertion like this is good for good, um, a good hope for those who are already having great difficulty meeting basic needs 
in the country as a whole, and they should not be left with empty rooms while the university proceeds to continue to build um, additional room. There may be opportunities for that later in the future, but certainly now I think that um, it will be a good thing um, to see this as part of an essential part of an agreement. Minister Burke says the St. George's University embraced the new proposal, which both parties agreed will build on existing advantages, including the role SGU plays in the advancement of Grenada's health and human resource development. He explains the relevance of the new agreement, which he says moves beyond scholarships and concessions. The university, I'm pleased to say, Mr. Speaker, accepted that proposal from us accepted the initiative and negotiations took place between August and November in three months and we were able to conclude a much more comprehensive agreement Mr. Speaker touching and concerning the issues that I've just raised. I consider this document Mr. Speaker to be a historic document because of its scope and its reach and the opportunities that it presents for Grenada. And what we seek to do here, Mr. Speaker, is to amend the St. George's University Limited Act number 18 of 1996 by repealing the first and second schedules and replacing those schedules with the terms and conditions that were agreed upon in the last uh, negotiations of which I spoke, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the first schedule provides for the charter of the university. Just uh, by way of background, I should say the first schedule that we seek to, to repeal and replace. The first schedule uh, provides for the, of the, uh, for the charter of the university. The charter outlines the objects and addresses the legal status and administrative structure of the university. There is now a new clause 2, Mr. Speaker, in Article 2 of that full schedule. That new clause, clause 5, states that the university and government will work together to ensure that the assessment of the impact of the university on the gross domestic product of Grenada is dealt with in a timely way, timely manner, and in accordance with the Statistical, Statistical Act and the Income Tax Act of Grenada. It goes on to say, Mr. Speaker, that moreover, both parties will work together to calculate the university's impact on Grenada's total gross domestic product. The St. George's University Limited Amendment Bill is also expected to maximize on avenues for improving Grenada's tourism product and activities. How can we work with the university to expand and promote airlift, to expand and develop perhaps a, uh, 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 an alumni week annually that will bring back all of the persons <laughs> who studied here and have a comprehensive week of activities that will boost tourism, to speak to the establishment within Grenada or the development and expansion within Grenada of the links between the alumni here and the alumni living abroad, to take a closer look at the issue of government concessions and how they were going to be extended. To speak to the issue, Mr. Speaker, of covenants and restrictions. If the university were to say, for example, we want to build a supermarket on campus, what should be the reaction of the government? If the university says we want to build another 400 rooms of dorms, what should be the reaction of the government having regard to the concerns that some um, uh, persons, landlords, who may have built out facilities, what will be, be their concern and how can we strike an appropriate compromise? To speak to the issue, Mr. Speaker, of the exchange of information between the university and the government, especially because the university plays such an important part in the life of the country and the, the information about its operations are going to be central to assist us in determining, first of all, what impact the university has on our economy, and secondly, what policies, programs, strategies can be developed to take account or to incorporate 
or to reflect the role that the university was playing. Covering funeral costs could become less stressful for Grenadians. A motion was unanimously passed in Parliament on Tuesday to amend Section 36 of the National Insurance Act. The Act currently prohibits the National Insurance Scheme from transferring benefits to Grenadians to pay debts. The amendment makes it possible for the scheme to make payments directly to funeral homes on behalf of its beneficiaries. Finance Minister Nazim Burke believes it's the right and sensible thing to do. Notwithstanding the wording of Section 36 and notwithstanding the law, Mr. Speaker, it has become the practice that the NIS over the years has been paying funeral expenses, funeral grants, I should say, directly to the funeral homes at the request of the person who has met that expense or at the request of the person who is liable to meet that expense. The payment of the funeral uh, benefit or funeral grant directly to the funeral home, of course, has certain advantages. It eases the burden of cash flow for the person who has to meet that obligation. And at the same time, uh, it provides the funeral homes with a certain measure of confidence, Mr. Speaker, in proceeding with the arrangements, especially for lower income persons on the knowledge that they will at least receive the funeral grant from the NIS. Had this not been the case, then the practice of funeral homes towards such persons may be a little more uh, uncompromising, one might say. Mr. Speaker, the board of directors of the National Insurance Scheme is of the view that the law should be brought in line with the current practice and they are therefore recommending that Section 36 be amended to allow for a direct transfer to the funeral homes, um, notwithstanding what the law presently says. So this is the sole purpose and intent of this amendment, <coughs> to simply give legal authority to the board and to the scheme to make payments directly to the to the, uh, to the funeral homes. Opposition leader Keith Mitchell calls the move a good and commendable step by government, but he believes more can still be done. Um, we, we on this side of the house um, have no difficulty um, supporting this initiative. We think it's a, uh, a good one um, for other reasons the minister didn't mention. I think it's certainly the right step. But just need to make the point, Mr. Speaker, for two points. It is clear that the, the grant and as it's providing at this time is given the increase in cost of funeral expenses. These grants were decided years ago. The level of of that is bus month is certainly has not in fact matched the increasing period of inflation um, that that people have to meet and therefore it is making it more and more difficult for poor families to meet the funeral expenses so it might have been a good thing for the government using its membership on the board with the workers' representative who ought not to really oppose this, to look at some increase um, for the funeral grant at the same time. So if I don't know if the law specify an exact formula, so we may not necessarily have to go to Parliament, but some initiative might be taken at the board level to increase the, the grants um, for funeral expenses, particularly, and I mean for, for the poor and vulnerable. I'm not suggesting that you do that for, 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 for most people. The 2011 hurricane season promises to be an above average one. That's the prediction of local and regional meteorologists as they gear up for the start of the season, June 1st. The first named storm will be Arlene. More in this report. 
Usually, on average, the season will have about 10 named storms, but this year, forecasters say Grenada can expect 16. Of that 16, nine can become hurricanes, five becoming major hurricanes. Head of the Med Office at the Morris Bishop International Airport, John Peters, says this is daunting news for not just Grenada, but the region on a whole. Usually, we, we would have, on average, about 10 named storms. This year, um, we're looking at a region of 16 named storms, right? Of those 16 named storms, it's possible that about nine could become hurricanes. The average is about six. And for major hurricanes, we are looking at a possibility of five major hurricanes uh, for this year, compared to, on average, two major hurricanes. Uh, specifically for the Caribbean, though, what is of even more interest is that there is a 61% probability that at least one major hurricane would track into the Caribbean. Uh, major hurricane, I mean of category, hurricane of category three, four, or five, right? So there's a 61% probability of that occurring, the average being 42%, right? So but from the figures alone, we are seeing that, yes, we anticipate an above average hurricane season for 2011. Mr. Peters says even now the Met Office is tracking a tropical wave which is producing some showers across the region. He says the region is still in the La Nina stage which is conducive for high weather activity. This, Mr. Peters says, is for the testimony that the season will be an active one. The Caribbean basin, because it's a smaller body of water, tends to heat up much faster than the wider body of Atlantic Ocean. Right? And for that reason, there is a high probability that the first or uh, the early activities could begin in the Caribbean Sea. Um, the good news is that that's west of us, and most times the system track from east to west. Right? Uh, but there are factors pointing to and supporting the cause um, for concern regarding the, the high level of activities expected. Right? We, we are still in a, a La Nina phase, um, the La Nina do support uh, higher activities in the Atlantic, right? Um, coupled with the warm sea surface temperatures and um, the existence of these tropical waves that are coming across, it, it is, you know, for concern. So indeed we have to keep on our alert. It is one that with heavy rainfall this hurricane season, people need to be watchful for floods and landslides. As we've been seeing so many changes. We, we came from a, a dry season where we had above normal rainfall, right? And this is again a concern going into the hurricane season because with the level of um, saturation of the soil, if we continue to see this extent of rainfall activities, then what we will have to be concerned with is the possibility of landslide and also the possibility of flooding, right? Usually if we have a normal dry season, then the first set of rains we tend to um, seep through the soil rather than run off. But because of the relatively higher level of soil moisture, it's possible that we could see, should the rain continue like that, you know, it's possible to see early signs of flooding and possible landslides. So I think that's the areas we have to be concerned about, even if we do not have um, a tropical storm or hurricane passing directly and affect us. The Meteorology Office has established three phases in which all information will be passed on, the alert, watch and warning phases. Peters assures the public that his office will be timely in reporting any weather changes and developments to ensure each citizen is ready and aware of what's happening. An alert phase could be when a system is within, say, three to four days away from us. We would have it under our so-called microscope. As the system gets closer and um, we under possibly increased threat, then we would have a watch phase, meaning that the system could be with us within 48 hours, right? And if it progresses further, and we have to institute the warning phase, meaning that the system is uh, within 36 hours of affecting us, right? So these phases have been established so that we will be able to give the information on a timely basis. Also with it, we'll want to know, okay, where the system is tracking, what sort of maximum sustained winds, you know, what are the possible effects, and all those will be contained in the bulletin that we, that we issue. Head of the Met Office at the Morris Bishop International Airport, John Peters.
Trinidad and Tobago has agreed to assist Grenada in a program of exploration and exploitation of its marine resources. Finance Minister Nassim Burke says there are reasons to believe that Grenada may have commercially significant deposits of hydrocarbon. Bearing this in mind, he said they saw the need to engage neighboring Trinidad on how they should go about the program of exploration and exploitation. A Grenada delegation led by Finance Minister met last Friday with a delegation headed by Trinidad's Energy Minister to discuss the prospects for cooperation and collaboration. This follows on an agreement concluded between both governments in May last year for delimitation of, fo of our boundaries. As a result of that engagement, it is now determined, Mr. Speaker, that the opportunity for joint work is real and imminent. The government of Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. Speaker, has agreed to work with us in the development of some joint seismic activity and to share with us seismic uh, information, seismic data that they have regarding um, the potential and possibilities in and around the border. We have agreed on a program of work uh, two, a working group will be established to try and get this done as quickly as possible. And it is my intention, Mr. Speaker, to continue to report to the nation as we go forward in that regard. Thank you very much. The Grenada branch of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association will host a major parliamentary conference from June 24 to July 1. The 36th annual conference of the Caribbean, the Americas and the Atlantic region will be guided by the theme Transforming a Parliament through Institutional, Cultural and Ethical Reforms from Analysis to Action. It will be held at the Grenada Grand Beach Resort and will attract more than 120 delegates and observers who will participate in a series of seminars and workshops arranged by a local planning committee. CPA Secretary General Dr. William Shea will be the special guest and will share his knowledge on the role of Commonwealth Parliaments in reducing local and global tensions. The fourth Commonwealth Women Parliamentarians Conference will be held simultaneously and will coincide with the celebration of 50 years of women in Grenada's Parliament. There will also be a lively focus on youth parliamentarians and on June 29, 2011, the 8th Regional Youth Parliamentary Debate will take place. All details and brochures will be sent to honorable members in due course. And we ask for your full cooperation and participation in the events of the 36th Annual Conference of the Caribbean, the Americas, and the Atlantic region. As a branch reaches out to the world, we'll be happy to receive your enthusiastic support. June 21st, 24th to July 1st, 2011 will be a grand occasion for the Grenada branch of the CPA and for our Parliament. Speaker of the House of Representatives George Maguire, you're watching the GIS News Hour. More news after the break. Uniquely rooted in our rich ancestral traditions. Feel, feel the energy at Spice Mass 2011, Grenada, July 22nd to August 9th. Home of 100,000 Jam Jam. The Caribbean's biggest summer festival and the safest carnival on earth. Spice Mass 2K11. It's all about Juve, traditional mass, pan, soca, the best street party in the world. Monday night mass, Spice Mass, Grenada, July 22nd to August 9th. Home of 1,000. 100,000 Jab Jabs. Log on now to www.spicemassgrenada.com for more info. Lazy 
bone, lazy bone, wake up! It's time for a PA timeout! CFNI and GFNC say take a timeout for physical activity! On the 1st of June, it's Caribbean Nutrition Day! Jump, skip, Hop, jump, swim, dance, play netball, cricket, football, volleyball, catch, walk, weed, sweep, at home, at school, at play, wherever you are. Take a PA timeout. Do whatever activity you like. Take a timeout whenever you can. Take a timeout however you are able. Take a timeout. Just get moving. Take a PA timeout. Welcome back to the broadcast. Minister for Youth Empowerment and Sports, the Honorable Patrick Simmons, says he's committed to educating youth about the seriousness of climate change. His decision to champion the cause is being spurred by his recent participation in a study group on climate change for small island developing states in Zanzibar, East Africa. The minister who calls his visit to the African nation the trip of his life says it is time we pay greater attention to climate change. The whole issue of climate change is something that we will definitely need to take very seriously and in fact in very soon I'll be um, presenting to the cabinet of Grenada the, 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 the outcome of, of that um, study group. And I do hope that we will be in a position to, in particular, to engage our young people to sensitize them on the whole issue of climate change. I myself was very enlightened because so many things that were mentioned and were spoken about that I really had no idea or no clue of. So at this stage, I think I, I will consider myself to be a little more enlightened on the issue and somewhat motivated to engage our young people so that they too would become more enlightened on, on climate change and the serious consequences of climate change. Representatives were charged with the responsibility of evaluating the role of Parliament in climate change. According to Simmons, particular attention was paid to the issue of sand mining. It, the issue on, on sand mining came up because the, the island of, of, of um, the Maldives, they brought up that issue on, on, um, on, on sand mining because <clears throat> that again too is affecting their islands in a very significant way. And the, the, the facilitators, in fact, <laughs> made reference to, because reference was made to um, sustainable sand mining. And the question was asked by the facilitator if there is an explanation for sustainable sand mining. So he wanted to find out exactly if we can give us a, a, a definition for sustainable sand mining, because Notwithstanding that we're looking at the issue of sand mining very lightly here in Grenada, but it's something that is, is, is given a lot of thought and something that is, 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 is in, the, in the minds of, of the facilitators and the, the, the World Bank and the, C, and the CPA or the Commonwealth Secretariat, they are very firm that this whole issue of sand mining, that is something that we need to address and to address it in a very serious way. The study group on climate change for small island developing states was an initiative of the CPA, the World Bank and the CARICOM Secretariat. Common Cheros and Associates Mass Band will be portraying lost treasures beneath the Caribbean Sea in this year's 2011 Spice Mass Parade of the Bands. The band launched their costumes on Monday evening at Port Louis Marina in Lagoon Road. Some features of the costumes include sea fan, silver coins, diamonds, pearls and the pirates for men, among others. The Common Cheros is the reigning band of the year and has been for 20 years now. Registration is open for anyone to sign up with them. Member of the committee, Katusha Cornwall, described what this year's mass band is all about. Our presentation revisits the days of the pirates in the Caribbean waters, plundering many Spanish gardens and living a lawless life with no allegiance to any country. Home for the pirates was roaming the Caribbean waters, hiding in any cove 
that can harbor their vessels. As fate would have it, some of the vessels got shipwrecked due to piracy, war, or inclement weather. Whether a watery grave, a graveyard of, sh of sunken treasures may of which are still unknown. Thus, leaving us with hordes of valuable riches beneath the Caribbean Sea. To name a few, the, the golden coins, the silver coins, diamonds, emeralds, rubies, pearls, and pirates. Culture Minister Senator Arlie Gill says the launch of the Common Cherries Band is a great pre-start to Carnival. This, he says, will augur well for the further promotion of the season. I believe that Common Cherries Mass Band is on the right track with regards to the launches. I believe that an early launch like this and the fact that you can find the costumes on, on, on websites at such an early stage is, is the way we want to push and to promote carnival. Of course, the carnival committee and the Ministry of Culture cannot do all of the promotions and marketing. But in the fact that we have taken the initiative to go to different cities in the diaspora, London and Toronto, and successfully launch carnival, and then come Saturday, we will be launching carnival here in Grenada, and then we proceed to, to, to Trinidad and Tobago to launch carnival. I believe that common Cherries is indeed playing their part to ensure that we have a successful carnival 2K11. And I, I just in closing, I want to place on record my heartfelt um, commendation to common Cherries for taking this initiative. Parliamentary representative for St. George Northeast, where the band is originated, the Honorable Nazim Burke, commended the group for their continued efforts in building Grenada's premier cultural event, Carnival. This band, is, as you heard earlier, is, is the band of the year, the reigning band of the year, has always uh, demonstrated excellence in their work, has always demonstrated a sense of family and community in the way that they've practiced the art of carnival. We are especially happy to be associated with you this year in your launch of the Lost Treasures. And of course, um, we expect that you will once again be doing what you, what you know how to do very well, which is winning. So I want to say on behalf of the people of St. George Northeast how pleased and happy I am to be associated with this launch this afternoon. We want to take the opportunity to congratulate you once again and to wish you the best as we go forward to this year's Carnival celebrations. Here's a look at some of the costumes.
An innovative method is being used to help people become more interested and involved in constitutional reform. A special Calypso competition is being organized to test the people's knowledge on the subject. A meeting will be held at the Ministry of Legal Affairs from 4.30 p.m. on a Thursday with prospective participants. Supreme Court Registrar Robert Branch says the idea is to explain the central changes and new provisions so that they get the main message of constitutional reform. Songs must be positive and in keeping with the theme linking constitutional reform to the strengthening of our democracy. Um, the idea is that by examining the constitution and deliberating on it, discussing it and uh, eventually enacting the suggested reforms that um, and by strengthening the democratic institutions that will have a stronger democracy. You know, so for example um, in the, 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 new, the new draft that we're um, proposing to the people, the, the language is simpler, mm -hmm. so that you don't have to be a lawyer to understand the technical details. And so, um, that, you know, that is one aspect of it. And there is also the whole question of the reconstitution of the head of state, so that the, okay. the proposal is that the queen is no longer a head of state, but we have a Grenadian citizen. So these are the sort of things that they could press on, but it has to be the interpretation of it. Branch says the winner will be required to perform at the match gra. Branch says they have already met with Colin Dow, chairman of the Carnival Committee, and Judy Benoit, president of the Calypso Judges Association, to determine how to establish the competition. It will be separately judged during the carnival season. And, um, essentially, it's going to be um, one wrong, but two modes of, adju of adjudication, mm -hmm. meaning that it's going to be judged on CDs. So um, the Calypsoans will have to... Um, get a song and CD and have it um, registered at the um, Carnival Secretariat before um, 4 p.m. on the 8th of July. Mm -hmm. And 80% um, of, 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 of the points in that competition is, is going to be from the, the judging on the CD by the judges and 20% and will be by um, airplay on the participating radio stations. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have a few um, <laughs> Uh, radio stations partnering with us and uh, based on the request by the audience and so 20% of the of the points that combination will come from that. Registration for this new competition takes place at the Carnival Secretariat and CDs with the competing songs are to be submitted prior to 4 p.m. on Friday the 8th of July. A unique feature of this competition is to have 20% of the points generated through the playlist based upon audiences' requests to participate in radio stations. This feature was included to ensure that the Grenadian public is conscious of the issues surrounding constitutional reform and participate in the process that informs its amendments. Prizes totaling almost $10,000 are up for grabs. The skills and the talent of dancers from Grenada, the region and beyond will be on display here during the 11th Biennial International Dance Festival. The June 1st to 4th Festival will include an exchange workshop on June 1st, Gala Night on Friday, June 3rd, and a youth explosion on Saturday 4th, all at the Grenada Trade Center. Participating groups on the Gala Night include the Grenada School of Dance, Conception Dance Theater, and international groups like MD Company, Ballet Teresa Corriendo, and Connecting Vibes. Two members from Connecting Vibes spoke with GIS during the Spice Morning Program about their participation. Member John McQueen is a Grenadian and is happy to participate in the festival. Connecting Vibes is a um, mixture, it's a collaboration of many different artists. We have dance professors, we have dance educators, we have professional dance artists like uh, our executive director um, Valerie Branch. Mm -hmm. We have a university student that just finishing their, um, their masters and bachelors in the dance, in the performing arts, and we have newly um, one or two year old college student that just started on the dance project. So what happened, we have a mixture of different uh, people that come together, this is why also we call it them connecting vibes that give us, you know, the opportunity to form that company. Valerie Branch, the executive director, says it's her first time in Grenada and is very excited about participating and learning more from our Grenadian dancers. Some of us have been performing professionally for more than 10 years and some of the 
dancers, this is their first experience dancing with a professional dance company. And so it's a learning curve for the ones that are still in college. And it's another experience for those of us that have been doing it for majority of our lives, right, for more than 10 years. Um, and so it's, it's kind of like a mentoring partnership you know so we have classes when when we're in rehearsals we do classes and we work specifically on technique we work a little bit John focuses a little bit on like the folk dances so that we can become familiar and versatile in the types of dances that we're doing so it's not so much ego because we are really empowering each other okay. and it's really about the group it's not about any single person yes when you see us perform you'll see that someone might have a solo someone might have a duet we might be dancing together but we're never in rehearsal and kind of spiteful towards each other right. it's always encouraging towards each other we're always lifting each other up you're watching the gis news hour sports is next with trevor thwaites stay with us Opportunities are available for Grenadians to pursue undergraduate studies in Venezuela for the academic year 2011. Scholarships are being offered in Integrate Communitarian Medicine and Food Engineering at the bachelor level and Tourism at the associate and bachelor levels. Applicants must be 18 years or older, unmarried, and should be a high school graduate for no more than five years. In the case of medical studies and other specialties, applicants must not be older than 24 years of age. Fully completed application forms must reach the scholarship desk no later than Monday, June 6, 2011. Additional information can be accessed through the Human Resource Development Division and Scholarship Desk, Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development. Telephone 440-27. Get active, eat healthy. It's Nutrition Week, May 30 through the 3rd of June. Yum! Some new and exciting sweet potato dishes at Camp Raymond on Tuesday, May 31st. On the 3rd of June, treat yourself to some delectable cassava dishes on the Carina. And in the evening, we watch GFNC play netball against Queen's Park Rangers on the River Road Hard Court. And don't forget to do a variety of physical activity today and every day. Take a PA timeout. The English and uh, Scottish Football Associations call for the postponement of the FIFA presidential election scheduled for May the 1st. Uh, the national soccer team spending a couple of days in Los Angeles finalizing their preparations for the Gold Cup starting on June the 5th. Uh, and a meaningful build-up largely credited for Grenada's success at the 2011 win Lotto-Win Islands uh, 2020 co competition in Dominica. This is another GIS Sports. Hello, I'm Trevor Thwaites. English and uh, the English and football, the English and Scottish Football Associations have called for the FIFA to postpone its presidential election scheduled for June the 1st. Uh, they have uh, made a plea following the withdrawal of a challenger, Bin Hammond, for president, uh, who was challenging the incumbent, Seb Blatter. Hammond withdrew his candidacy after allegations of bribery were brought against him and executive member Jack Warner. The duo is said to have rolled out cash totaling 40,000 U.S. dollars to associations in the Caribbean Football Association CFU region to vote for Hammond at the forthcoming elections during, uh, during a meeting in the region in May. The English and Scottish Federation said that the decision that the election should be postponed to give credibility to the process and to allow an alternative candidate time to stand for the president for the presidency 
They added that the recent events have also made an election unworkable since the integrity and reputation of the game are of paramount importance at this time. The world is now looking on to see what sort of support the two football associations will receive because they must get uh, three quarters support from the 208 members of the FIFA Congress for any postponement to take place. However, reports indicate that uh, President Seb Blatter was defiant uh, at a news conference on Monday that the presidential election should go ahead as planned. Well, a former Grenada national player who has served as an executive on the Grenada Football Association FIFA, or GFA, has implicated the association in the money scandal that has resulted in the suspension of Jack Warner from FIFA, football's world governing body. Paul Roberts told local reporter Janelle Rubin that he had received $20,000 to buy equipment for a communications department that the GFA was planning to set up. The idea, according to Roberts, was that the facility would broadcast live GFA football games. Warner and Bin Hammond have both denied the accusations of offering cash bribes to National Football Associations at a specially convened meeting of the CFU on May 11th and uh, 10th and 11th in Port of Spain, Trinidad. It is claimed that the two officials offered members of the CFU $40,000 in cash as gifts and development projects and that it was implied that the money was in return for the votes or votes in Bin Hammond's presidential campaign. Robert says he knows of at least two of the GFA officials who attended that CFU meeting with Hammond and Warner in May in Trinidad and Tobago. Well, uh, easing up the allegations a bit. Football, if all goes well, five matches were played out this weekend in the GFA Premier League competition. The GFA says that games were played off at the Roy St. John Field in Tantin, or possibly at the National Stadium. Football officials also indicate that efforts have been made this year to play matches at enclosed venues so that patrons can pay to see football at the highest level in the country. However, after an impressive opening at the season last Friday evening, we saw Grenada and Antigua play to a one or two all draw and Lion Paradise kick off in style with a 2-1 win over New MGBSS in the opening Premier League game, there appears to be more problems. The four matches scheduled for last weekend did not take place because the GFA says that the venue was not available. The stadium authority confirmed that the, that the facility was not available on Saturday because of the big concert. Fans are wondering why matches should uh, schedule for Saturday or Sunday did not take place and why teams were allowed to journey from Farah Chantimel to the venue where, when there weren't any games scheduled. Certainly a big breakdown in communications right here. Still with football, the national team left earlier today for, on Tuesday for the United States from Panama for the Gold Cup starting on June the 5th. The 30-man 30 30 squad of 23 players and seven officials was expected later in Los Angeles, where they remained there for a couple of days, finalizing arrangements for the competition. Grenada opens its campaign on June the 6th at the Home Depot Center with a game against Jamaica. They face Honduras on the 10th and Guatemala on the 11th in the preliminaries of the tournament. Confidence is high in the local camp that the team can obtain at least four points in the preliminaries and advance to the second round. Reports indicate that the star midfielder, Shalavi Joseph, who was expected to join with the team in Los Angeles, will not be available for the tournament. News from the GFA is that he has aggravated a groin injury, which will sideline him for at least three weeks. Grenada has also lost the sources of their deadly striker, Kitson Bain, who misses out after being injured last week. In news of cricket, Grenadians, five Grenadians have been chosen in a 14-man Will Island squad selected for the regional 2020 competition in July. Devon Smith, Andre Fletcher, Dennis George, Neelan Pascal, and Tate Carmichael played well to win the nod of the selectors at the just-ended tournament in Dominica. It is particularly a special moment for young Tate Carmichael, who was making his first outing for Grenada. Michael says that he had uh, studied himself. He had to study himself after being pretty nervous at the start.
Yeah, well, I was real nervous when I went into battle. I was real nervous, and then, you know, I had the senior player there with me, Devon Smith, and he tell me, you know, just back yourself up playing a normal game. So, and I just go out there and just do that. How did you go about pacing yourself? I know you just said that Devon helped you a bit, but uh, what was going through your mind? What were some of the things that you had to, to do to, to go on to do pretty well? Well, I, I know once, you know, I just spent about sometimes in the wicket, you know, just not nudge the ball around. Get myself going, get myself sweating. I know that I will be dangerous in, in coming down to the end. Then. What are some of the things Devon really told you in the middle? You know, just keep, just keep batting, play positive. You know, pick the right set of balls and stuff. Where does Tate Michael go from here? Well, I get picked <laughs> onto the Winwood's team. You know, we have a couple of um, practice games to go and play, so I really, I really want to, you know, go out there and perform and get on the final thirteen. That's uh, Tate Kamiko, batsman Tate Kamiko. Manager Juno Murray says that the performances of Devon Smith and Dre Fletcher, uh, Tate Kamiko, were commendable. I think uh, the Devon Smith performances, Andre Fletcher performances, and Tate Kamiko, I think he is a newborn on the block. He came, he went out there, made a debut for Grenada, and, and, and did a pretty proud. And from the time he did that, everyone wanted to know where, where this guy came from, who is he? You know, and Slickers is all, all over the case. You know, so I think. That was a, a really good, a, a good performance by the guys. Maurice, Maurice indicates that a quality build-up was crucial to their success. I think I think it was a, a, a big effort too, a, a big a big factor. We prepared for approximately eight weeks. It never happened in Guinea cricket before, and I think all the hard work paid off in the end. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and what were some of the special things that you really looked at in terms of preparation for this tournament? Well, it's all fitness. It's 2020 cricket. We beat a lot on our fitness work, and once you're fit, everything comes in very easy. National manager, <laughs> almost at cricketer, Juno Murray. Well, high commendation has been extended to the national team by the St. David's Cricket Association or the St. David's Cricket uh, Council on its success in Dominica. President, President uh, Gabriel Henry was expecting Grenada to win because he describes uh, their build-up as really meaningful. For the last six, seven weeks, the national team was training, and here we see what when you when you organize and you and you are, and you are well disciplined, you, you bring results. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I had absolutely no doubt that Grenada would have um, won the tournament because the num the training that went into the whole tournament, the the organizational work, the discipline of the players, I had absolutely no doubt that Grenada would have won. Unfortunately, we lost the first game, but I knew that we would have bounced, bounced back. President of the St. David's Cricket Council, Gabriel Henry. And finally, England captain Andreas Strauss says that he was surprised that they won the opening test against uh, Sri Lanka in Cardiff uh, with four mornings of the five-day match, uh, five match loss because of rain. A tame draw was on the cards uh, after Pakistan scored 400 in their first innings and England responded uh, with uh, the close of play on the fourth day. They were 491 for five. But with 53 overs of play remaining on the final day, England declared on 495 for 5 after Bell scored 103 not out. He was unbeaten on 98 at stumps on the fourth day. Strauss admits that they were not expecting such a result at the start of the day and credited the bowling of Chris Termlett, Graham Swan, and Stuart Broad. He said that the hostility of the opening bowlers paid dividends, which were exploited by spinner Swan, which put the opposition under immense pressure. Trimnet took four wickets, Swam four, and Broad took two. Sri Lankan captain Tilakaratni Dilshan said that it was difficult to understand or explain the defeat. He said he was most confident that they would have so held out for a draw given the strong, strong battle lineup in the Sri Lankan lineup. He's nonetheless hoping that uh, they will now regroup and come storming back in the second test starting on Friday. Well, we look forward to that. Uh, GIS will be on the ball. That's sports. I'm Trevor Thwaites. Shop online at your favorite stores around the world and your package will be delivered to your doorstep right here in Grenada. The Grenada Postal Corporation brings you closer to the rest of the world with GPC Global. GPC Global is a new, exciting and cost-effective service. 
For less than $20 US, you can have your own personal mailbox in the US and off you go shopping. You can view your shipment as it moves 24-7 with up-to-the-minute tracking. Make your purchase and GPC Global will do the rest, even customs clearance. We make it easy and hassle-free. GPC Global, the world at your fingertips. Dependable, reliable and safe. It's the Eucharistic Passover for men as we seek to help men play their leadership roles in their homes, church and communities. Theme, Yahweh call it the man. Adam, where are you? It's a call for men to take stock of their respective lives. This year, the men journey to the St. Rose Modern Secondary School, June 18 and 19. Guest speaker, Father Roy Lee from the USA. There'll be music, song and dance by our young men. Registration fee, $50 and covers lunch for both days. So get involved. Inspire your youth or men's group in your parish to participate in the Eucharistic Passover for Men at the St. Rose Modern Secondary School, Saturday, June 18th and Sunday, June 19th from 9 a.m. Welcome back. Recapping the main points in tonight's news, St. George's University gets high praise from government for contributions to national development. Grenadians will soon be paying less for funerals and the 2011 hurricane season promises to be above average. Five major hurricanes are expected. On behalf of the entire team here at the Government Information Service, I am Abigail McIntyre. Thank you for joining us. watching the Government Information Service, channels 12 and 22.